I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. I'm a helicopter pilot, and I work for a utility company that inspects high-tension power lines and does maintenance on those lines. We're oftentimes in very remote areas. I generally have another guy in the aircraft with me as we fly different sections of lines each day. This happened in the summer of 2017. We were inspecting lines in northern Utah when I saw what I think may have been two or more creatures. It was about 0800 in the morning as we were flying along this valley headed to the section of lines we had for the day. As we neared a clearing, the guy flying with me yelled to turn around. I asked why, and he explained that he saw two large creatures walking through this clearing. I made a hard right 180 back to the clearing and brought it to a hover just outside the clearing. I thought maybe he saw elk or maybe a bear, and half figured the rotor wash and noise from the aircraft would scare off anything, but as we both scanned the area, he yelled and pointed. Right on the edge of the clearing, we both saw two large figures standing upright. Standing about 20 yards on their right were three much smaller ones, all looking up at us as if they were curious. We were at least a good 60 miles into the wilderness, and I can't see a human being that far out as there were no trails leading to that area. I hovered for probably another three or four minutes when the smaller of the two large ones walked over to the smaller ones and they walked into the trees while the bigger one followed behind them. We continued our day and didn't really talk about it until dinner that night. Anonymous I've had two strange experiences, both of which were within the 5,500-acre Paw Tuckaway State Park in Nottingham, New Hampshire. I was encouraged to share my story with the world, only after stumbling upon two separate yet similar experiences by others in the same area years later. First, it is important to know that I grew up on the land directly adjacent to Paw Tuckaway and spent most of my childhood in that wilderness with family, friends, and dogs. My family had a very small farm with chickens, ducks, turkeys, and pigs. My dad and I cut and split firewood for heating in the winter. We owned snowmobiles, four-wheelers, and dirt bikes. We had trails all over our own 40-plus acre property that led directly to trails within Paw Tuckaway, as well as to many other networks of trails via old logging paths and stagecoach roads. My family and I ice skated and fished on the pond near our property. My dad hunted deer. We raised apple trees and Christmas trees in separate clearings. We were always outside as a family, year-round. I am extremely familiar with the local flora and fauna and landscapes. It's a very unique place. So on the summer days of my college years, I'd stay at my parents' house and work at Paw Tuckaway State Park on the seasonal maintenance landscaping crew. Paw Tuckaway is 5,500 acres of preserved land with trails, a lake, a beach, three campground areas, rec areas, and three small mountains. The mountains and trails are on what's referred to as the backside of the park, or the reservation. In the summer, there are lots of visitors to the campground and beach. It was late summer, 2005, when myself and a co-worker saw something we couldn't explain. It was a rainy day late in the season. There weren't many visitors around because the weather had been horrible, and it was almost time to go back to school. I was driving the dump truck. Brent, my co-worker, he was a high school student at the time, was in the passenger seat. We had finished the afternoon dump run down at the campgrounds and headed up the hill to the maintenance shop. There's one road in and one road out. Coming from within the park, the road inclines and turns quite a bit as you're heading up or out. We hadn't seen many people, day use or campers that day, because of the reasons I described above, rain and downpours. As we were driving up and passing Mountain Pond on our right, up ahead about 200 yards where the road starts to bend, we both see something very big, very fast, and very dark glide across the road on two legs. It appeared to take two to three quick strides, tops, to get to the other side of the road and down a small embankment and out of sight. As soon as I saw it, I yelled to Brent, Did you see that? He confirmed and immediately admitted that he was scared. My adrenaline was pumping. I kept driving and pulled over next to where I thought this thing had crossed the road. I threw the truck in park and jumped out to take a look. I asked Brent to come with me. He refused and stayed in the truck. 
He was really shook up and admittedly scared. He wouldn't move. So I ran around the front of the truck and took a few steps down the embankment, and all I could hear was the thrashing through the forest. I heard trees, logs, sticks snapping and cracking like the thing that was running was going full speed through whatever was in its way. I yelled out, Hey! and just heard more of the same loud thumping and crashing. I stood there at the edge of the woods listening until I couldn't hear it running away anymore. I got back in the truck and talked with Brent. We discussed what had just happened. Neither of us had an explanation or any idea what was going on. He was scared. I remember him asking me if we saw an alien. I didn't feel fear, just extreme curiosity. We agreed that it couldn't have been a bear, moose, deer, bobcat, etc. We reeled out every single large animal in the area, because it was running on two legs. Not for a second did either of us think it was a human. It was raining. That would have been very odd behavior for a person. It was too big, it was all one color, and the direction in which it was running, there's nothing, not even trails, just wilderness for miles. It didn't make too much sense. Initially, I only told my dad and a few really close friends, and that's all. The years following this, I kind of filed it away in my mind as a weird occurrence, and didn't give it too much thought until a later event, which I'll describe now. So now it's early spring, 2011, probably late April, early May. I remember there was no snow on the ground. I was taking my new dog, a German Shepherd pup named Sally, out for a hike on the backside of Paw Tuckaway. This is where there are many miles of hiking trails and three mountains, with a few friends of mine. Over the years, a few close friends of myself would hike and bushwhack all over the mountains. Most of the times, we would have at least one dog with us. It was early, I think we had planned on meeting out there around 9 or 9.30, and I was early, so I decided to head up the mountain with Sally before my friends got there. I remember being the only car there. No one else was out there that morning when Sally and I set off. It was a really beautiful morning, calm, no wind, seasonably warm, and the air just had a fresh spring smell to it. I started up the trail, we got to a trail intersection where we took a left to head up the mountain. We got up maybe a few hundred yards when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, below to the left, a tree suddenly came crashing down with no warning. Simultaneously to the right, I heard the strangest squealing, snorting, grunting, growling sound imaginable. I can't even describe it. It was frightening and completely unrecognizable. It was almost like a pig mixed with a bear, if that makes any sense. It all happened so fast and as soon as the tree fell, it was followed by the same thrashing and thumping through the forest that I had heard a few years ago. I froze, and Sally froze. I didn't know whether to look down the hill to my left where the tree had fallen, or up over the right where the strange sound and wild thrashing had come from. I was scared. I just remember standing there in the middle of the trail, frozen for a few minutes, not sure what to do. Eventually, I snapped out of it, grabbed a stick, and headed back toward the car, hoping my friends were there. I got to my car and waited a few minutes before they arrived. When they got there, I told them exactly what happened. Neither thought it made any sense, and neither did I. We got going and ended up hiking up the mountain that day. I kind of brushed this one off too, but it wasn't until I heard someone else's account around the same time, in the same area, that I started feeling validated and putting it all together as a relevant occurrence. I read about a jogger who was on the same mountain with his two dogs in February and saw something big, dark, and very fast cut across the trail directly in front of him. He had no explanation. Then also in the same general time frame, there was a teenager mountain biking on his property, which was near Paw Tuckaway, who had seen something big, dark, and fast hiding behind trees, looking out at him as he was on his mountain bike. I don't really like hiking by myself that much anymore. Nick I live in Nottingham, New Hampshire. Here's my story. So I was riding my bicycle in the woods when I heard a loud howl. When I heard that howl, it felt like lightning struck me. I looked to the right, and at the bottom of the hill in the woods... I saw a big brown figure hitting a tree. I pedaled as fast as I could and ran inside. I would like to speak to a researcher personally. 
Investigator Matt Hapson was able to speak with the witness. Due to the fact the witness is a 14-year-old, he obtained permission from his parent. Exact location has been removed from the report. The witness was able to fill in a few more details. Here's what he said. He has mountain bike trails behind his house and had decided to go ride his bike on a nice summer day to get some exercise. He'd been out riding the trails for a few minutes and was on his way down a hill when he heard some stomping noises. He stopped his bike, looked around, and said in a loud voice, Anybody there? He did not hear any replies and could hear no other noises, so he continued his ride. The trail continued on and goes up a hill. He said he had just gotten to the top of this hill when he heard what he said was a roar. When asked to describe the roar, the witness said it sounded like a dog, kinda, but much deeper and stronger. He said this shocked him and he stopped immediately and looked to the right. The witness said that there standing about 20 feet away at the bottom of this hill to the right of the trail was a huge dark figure hitting a tree. The witness believes it was using its hand to hit the tree since he did not see a stick or a log. Height estimated to be at least 9 feet tall and very wide. I asked the witness to describe the width of the figure in comparison to the width of his dad. He said the figure was at least two and a half times the width of his dad. He said that the figure had reddish brown hair, fur, looked kind of dirty, and smelled like a dumpster in the hot sun for two weeks straight. The figure and the witness locked eyes for a second or two, and then he said the figure took two or three steps into the woods and was gone. The witness pedaled as fast as he could to his house and ran inside. He said the figure had blue-greenish eyes. He said it looked like the figure kind of ground his teeth at him before it stepped into the woods. He also said that he could see his house from the top of the little hill that he also saw the figure from. Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. If you have a story you would like to share here, you can email me, Lynn Smith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com. I think you might find this video of interest as well.